have been seven or eight when this bad boy hits doors, but golly gee, this game became one of the best gifts of my life. The characters in this game were like a family to me. I know, it's corny, but you know, I'd come home after school, I'd see all of them, they get into their crazy hijinks and antics, their personalities. It made for some of the cringiest machinima ever. Link, there's a secret I've been meaning to tell you. What is it, Zelda? I'm a guy. Damn it. Beach, I know it's been about eight years, but I was wondering if I could look up your dress. So does that mean it's off the table or? Sweet. Seeing them all transform over the years from Melee, Brawl, and Smash War was one of the coolest things to anticipate in the new games. Zelda, Marth, Link, Ness, and we even got Mewtwo back. Just. You know, I always forget, but the Ice Climbers didn't make it into Smash 4. Now, I know they didn't want to cut them, but it still feels like a very valued member of the Smash family was lost in this game. So, on today's very special Know Your Moves, we're gonna tackle a character that may very well be forgotten and celebrate their history, their background, and all the things related to their design. Yeah. Ice Climber was originally released in 1984 in arcades as Versus Ice Climber, but it made its way onto the NES shortly after. Fun fact, the people who worked on this game went on to develop Super Mario Bros. and the first Zelda. Which is ironic, because I always felt the blocks and platforms look a tad recycled from Ice Climber. In this game, players take control of Popo and Nana. However, unlike in Smash, they're controlled by players 1 and 2 respectively. Smash portrayed the character as both Popo and Nana because of the cooperative platforming gameplay that was part of the original. Sure, there were all these games and yes, they were cooperative, but Ice Climber was out in 1984 and it was kind of a new thing to have meaningful cooperative play. This cooperative nature means that you'll have a better time working with someone to climb up the mountain than you will doing it alone. The goal of the game is to climb up 32 mountains to recover the Ice Climber's lost vegetables. And ba boom that's all they have! Sure making my job easy. But before we get into their attacks, let's take a look at the other aspects that were taken from Ice Climber that made it into the Smash series. First, those vegetables. Now while you collected carrots, cucumbers, and cabbage, the main vegetable that the condor takes at the beginning of each level was an eggplant. It was also the first vegetable you collect in the bonus stages. And yes, this is why the eggplant is their franchise logo in Smash. The Condor makes an appearance in Smash as well. At the end of the bonus level, players have to grab him to truly complete the level and make them happy if you feel. This was included to their entry animation of Brawl. Also, this guy appears at the end of the Ice Climbers Break the Target stage in Melee. Actually, this whole stage is a tribute to the Ice Climber game with breakable blocks and the same types of platforms. It's pretty clever. Other than stuff directly involved with the character, Melee included the enemies Topi and Polar Bear on the Icicle Mountain stage. The interesting thing is that the Polar Bear and Ice Climber jumped up and slammed the ground, advancing the level upward if the player was having trouble. A similar thing happens in the Icicle Mountain stage where if you jump up during a certain phase, the level progresses up. Also, when you hit this guy, he does the same little thing he does. In Brawl, the Summit stage is a reimagining of an Ice Climber type of stage, where these enemies, some vegetables, and fish are all chilling out. <laughs> Chillin', it's cold outside, ooh -hoo -hoo. Other than this, many traits of the Ice Climber character were faithfully carried over from the original NES game. 
Sakurai was heavily aware of how random the Ice Climbers were when he put him in Melee. He quotes on the Japanese Melee website that he wanted a representation of a character that originated on the Famicom. And, even then, Sakurai only wanted to include characters in Smash that had things or traits that only they possessed. So between these fellas, the Ice Climbers were chosen for their unique tag team play style. And even as he was conjuring up and balancing this character, Sakurai says, word for word, you'll find them annoying. As for their moveset, well, we only have one place to draw from. And the Ice Climbers didn't do much in the game either. Even so, their moveset took more inspiration from this one game than Ganondorf's whole moveset did the entire Zelda series. <laughs> First, their hammer swing. This is where their forward smash was inspired from, even from the way it swings overhead and how they hop off the ground. And sure, all of their moves are kind of hammer swings, but this one is more one-to-one. -one. Actually, I think this hammer swing is also represented through Ice Climber's forward aerial, as it's the same motion, just in the air. In Ice Climbers, they actually do use their hammer in the air to swing at overhead blocks, which was translated to their up aerial. Other than that, their neutral special ice shot was inspired from the topies of this game. These are the guys who push ice blocks over the gaps you made to fill them back up. Oh, right in the mummy daddy button! Then finally, there is Belay. This is the Ice Climber special that can only be done if you have both of them close together. And in Ice Climber, this is very much the same idea. In that game, you don't need to have Nana, but if you do, it makes traversing up these mountains a whole lot easier. Also, there's a neat little trick where if you can jump on your fellow Ice Climber's head while they're jumping, you can pogo off of them and stay in the air longer. Which, trust me, would make this a whole lot easier. Those are all the moves in the game that are one-to-one, -one, but there are a ton of other assets taken from Ice Climber that I think you'll find interesting. Another thing Sakurai took from the classic game was how they moved on the ground and in the air. On the ground, they waddle along just about the same. In Smash, their traction was taken from Ice Climber directly, as here, if you come to a stop, you'll slide a bit before you can FUCK! Then, their jump. Not only was their jump animation carried over, but their aerial mobility, or lack thereof, was too. And again, on the Japanese Melee website, Sakurai makes note that this flaw had been faithfully translated from their original game to Smash. Their ability to move side to side in the air is nearly the same arc as it is an Ice Climber. Perhaps that's why their side B is Squall Hammer, so they can recover horizontally. And of course, their jump noise! This annoying noise was directly taken from the original game. But what else? Well, Smash also took cues from their bonus game results screen. Here, there's a cute little Ice Climber reacting to how they did. If you completed it, they'll be jumping with joy, but if you fail, they'll be wiping their tears in misery. This became one of their taunts in Brawl and their animation for if they lose a match. Their animations for when they're hit and lose a life was also carried over into Smash. This was translated to their tumbling animation after they're hit with a strong attack. And that was all I could dig up on their inclusion in Melee and Brawl, because those were the only games they were in. The Ice Climber duo are the only characters, or characters, character, whatever, that were in both Melee and Brawl that did not make it into Smash 4. It's like losing a family member. Like, you never think you would actually care about them, but now they're not here and you're like, fuck. The reason Ice Climbers didn't make it into Smash for 3DS and Wii U is because they wouldn't have worked on those consoles. But why is this the case? They could work on a GameCube, but not these? Well, apparently they had them working on a Wii U just fine. It was the 3DS's hardware that made them an issue. It just couldn't handle rendering two models on one character at the same time. But mind you, this doesn't just mean one-on-one. -on -one. This is all types of game modes. So as it turns out, the processing on the 3DS couldn't handle them, and they couldn't be put in. Masahiro Sakurai and the Smash team brought us Mega Man, then Pac-Man, then Ryu, and now even Cloud! But they couldn't find a way to make the Ice Climbers work? I don't think that's true. Masahiro Sakurai is a miracle worker to say the least. Many fans have suggested that they make up for losing the Ice Climbers by including a single Ice Climber instead. You know, because in Ice Climber single player, you only played as Popo, and if you wanted both of them, you could have them through alternate costumes, like Wii Fit Trainer and Villager. No. I don't think so. That would not be the Ice Climbers. And I think Sakurai knows this. If he wanted to do them like that, I think he would have done it in the first place. But he didn't. A solo Ice Climber would defeat the reasoning as to why Sakurai added them way back in Melee. 
And though Nana can be stupider than a pile of wee shovelware, I would not give her up just to have Popo. The nature of the Ice Climbers and their teamwork would be lost. Did you know that in Melee, her CPU intelligence level scales alongside how much damage Popo gets, not herself, but Popo. And though these have their competitive uses, I think it says a lot about the nature of their design. Unlike Olimar and Rosalina where their teammates are just expendable, when your Nana's gone, she's gone. But if you know how to work with them together, their results are... Oh my... In Melee, if you manage to desync them, which means Nana's attacks will lag after Popo's, it'll allow the player to input different attacks for each of them at a different time to make some of the wonkiest combos in the game. And... Oh, wobbling. Wobbling is basically an infinite in Melee, that if you have a desync Nana, lets her hit the opponent while Popo pummels them, and gets them locked for as long as the player wishes. And guess what? Brawl sorta had a similar thing too. Though, it's not a wobble, it's just a chain grab. It utilizes the two of the Ice Climbers to re-grab opponents while the other is throwing them. I mean, go on a wiki, learn how to do this stuff if you want, because I can't, but point is, you need them to work together if you want this to work. You can go move for move and see how much the character is crippled when you lose your Nana. Squall Hammer don't go as high, Neutral B doesn't stun as long, Smash Attacks don't hit as hard, and Kiss Your Ability to Recover Goodbye. I guess I have to stop rambling on about this sometime. And you're probably saying, Alax, why do you care so much about the Ice Climbers? They're just a character that won one game on the NES and were in Smash games, so what? So what? Well, it has something to do with what we talk about in all the Know Your Moves, just not directly. A character becomes more than that character when they enter Smash Brothers. Fans care so much about how characters are put into this game because of the memories attached to them. Video games do a thing where they emotionally attach you to characters because of the experiences you shared with them. It's why we have mains in Smash Brothers and why we care about having new characters in the next installments. So when these characters are omitted, a lot of memories and emotions go with them. Sure they're not in Smash 4, maybe they won't be in Smash 5, but what I can be happy about is, their memories will last forever. And wherever they go next, Popo and Nana will be right beside each other. Wow, dude, I appreciate it, but what could you have gotten me? Oh, yeah, this is amazing! And they're available on Teespring only till Christmas? Oh, as a gift for people's loved ones, or for themselves if they want a Boxing Day gift. Wow, Kat, you're incredible. You are amazing. We should do this for every Know Your Moves. What do you think? You can all go to the link in the description to get your very own Ice Climber and Chill Tea. For a boy, for a girl, whoever you like, to celebrate this cute Inuit duo that are still together, even not a smash. But they'll only be available until Boxing Day, so get them while they're hot. Thanks for watching, everybody. And happy holidays from everyone here at Relax Relax. And we will see you on the flip side.